coming to everyone live uh, from a very new place under this uh, this trellis here at uh, Children's Colorado and I uh, wanted to come to you with another exciting Emory episode as uh, last night and yesterday was groundbreaking. It was a major transition that we've been longing for for such a long time. And uh, you may find yourself personally in a place where you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. You may feel a little claustrophobic, kind of like this trellis where it's, it's pretty encompassing and you can't see a light at the end of the tunnel and it's just like, man, why ever get through this? Why ever get past this? And I wanna tell you that you can and you will if you keep hanging in there. Just like the Apostle Paul said, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, in due season, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. The key word in that, in that passage is if. If we do not give up. And I know some of you, you feel like giving up. It's like, how much longer can I keep going through this? How much longer can I keep bearing this? I just want to encourage you from a man who's been through it uh, coming up 15 months on uh, October 19th. 455 days today in the hospital. As you can see, the hospital right around me. I'm telling you, you will get through it. And we're not even done with this journey. To be totally frank, we're entering a new season with new demands. It's a very exciting step because we're a step closer to home. But I got to be honest with you guys, it, it's difficult as a parent uh, with a special needs child with a lot of things that come with our daughter with all the, all the different things for the trach, for the G-tube, for different components that healthy baby you just don't have to deal with. And just considering the reality, bringing her home. I've got to be honest with you guys, it's been overwhelming. And I, I've wrestled because I, I was here just on, uh, on I think it was Saturday, uh, with my dad. And I was looking at Emery, I'm like, man, I haven't been here since Sunday. And the message in my head that popped in, you're a failure as a dad. You know I know where that cut came from. Satan is the accuser of the brethren. He is the condemner. He is the liar. And I know many of you as parents, it can be overwhelming how many hats of responsibility we wear as not only a parent, but as, as a husband or wife, as a worker as someone in the workforce, as someone that is a minister, someone that is involved in an organization. We each wear various hats of responsibility and have different roles and sometimes those roles can seem like they're clashing and it can be so difficult because there's seasons for everything. Just as I see right around me, we have some remnants of the snow and the leaves have been falling and it, it's been it's been a change in season and it's been a change in season with where Emery's at as she has graduated the NICU. Yesterday I got to, to be there virtually uh, through uh, FaceTime as we as she made that transition from the NICU to the ninth floor. So she is at the very top floor of the hospital up there. Very top very top up there she's like right over there somewhere in there and uh, it it's amazing it feels a lot more homey we have more privacy it's really nice we're really excited about this transition it's really exciting but I also want to be real with you guys is it, it is difficult uh, having so many different responsibilities so many different roles quite frankly some days can just be overwhelming and what Jesus has reminded me of in this place is what he said as he preached. He said, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. 
each day has enough trouble of its own. And it's interesting, following that, he then says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Are you worried and are you freaking out about the responsibility you have? Are you wrestling like, this is too much. I don't know if I can do this. Coming back to where I started, take to heart these words from Jesus. Do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble with its own. But, key transition, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things, all the things that we need daily, be added unto us. And this morning I've really been rehearsing in the last couple days from Hebrews, uh, a book written a letter written to those in the throes of great suffering and loss. They were losing everything. The temptation, the trial was severe. And I love the context of this. At the very beginning of, the, of this letter, he says, Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. Let that sink in. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. He knows what it's like to be crushed under the weight of responsibility, to have a lot of demands pressing in on him. After all, he was a highly sought after man. He was healing people all over and everyone was flocking. He knows the weight of so many expectations, so many roles. He understands, guys. But we have one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Yet he didn't give in to the selfishness. He didn't give in to, to bad attitudes. He was tempted in every way, yet without sin, sinless. What we couldn't accomplish, he did. And this is the big part. This is the part I've been really rehearsing and letting sink into my heart. Let us then, with confidence, draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Let these words sink in, friends. Let us then, with confidence, knowing our Father longs to give us every good and perfect thing and everything we need, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. The mercy and the grace you need in this time of need that you're facing, friends, is real. So let's draw near with confidence to a Father who has everything we need for life and godliness. We're not barren. We may be insufficient on our own, but just like the pastor said at Cherry Hills on Sunday, it was such a refreshing word. When Satan comes to him and says, you don't have what it takes, he says, you're right. But he who within me, Jesus, has everything that it takes. God confidence, not self-confidence. So may you receive mercy and grace in this time of need. I love you, friends, and uh, may grace and mercy be multiplied to you in the situation you're facing. We have an exciting adventure here. Excited to see where Jesus takes us because the greater the grit, the greater the grace. Love you guys.